it shall see from Paper Rock 2 Studio. Today I'm sharing with you the speed up version of the Art Joy of Sharing live stream show. We do this show in support of our Art Joy of Sharing art community every Thursday at 8.30 Pacific time over on the Art Joy of Sharing channel. So you, if you enjoy live streaming, you can come and join us there. Uh, leave comments, talk to us in the chat or whatever while we're working. This is Peg Robinson and I. We do that together as well as the art community on Facebook where we have challenges and we share things. Of course, today is the last day of March and so the hashtag AJOS Muted Tones is ending and we will have a new theme, a new challenge, a new art, um, a new mute mood board tomorrow, April 1st. And even though it is April Fool's Day, it will actually be up on April 1st. We considered maybe, you know, making a joke out of that, but we didn't. So today, while we're talking about spring and about um, just different stuff, we are working in journals. And I found a lost and forgotten journal that I had meant to make into a series at one point. It's a butterfly journal. And I have this box full of butterfly things that I could use in my butterfly journal, which is a tiny journal I made using a die cut. And if I can find it, I will link the die cut down below. Um, it's from a company called, it's something to do with love. And um, I just can't remember the name of it right now, but I will try to find the the, uh, the dies for that. They're inexpensive at that, at that shop. And you can make a journal like this by just cutting out your pages. So the pages are already colored and they're done with sprays and stencils and maybe a little bit of gesso resist. And then I just punch them all out with the dies, strung them together with some um, hemp twine type stuff. And I was working in it and I got a couple pages done and the covers. And then for some reason, I just stopped working in it. Like I've said before, you know, making journals and finishing journals are two separate activities altogether. So what I'm using on this first page is some things that I had and I, I pulled out today's March 31st, 2022. So I pulled out uh, the page from my little tear off uh calendar that I bought at the beginning of the year. Uh, some people have asked me where you can find it. They sold them out really quick. I was lucky to even get one, but it was done by a, a few different, you know, a group of, of artists who all contributed pages and then they had it printed out and they sold it um, at the beginning of the year. A really fun idea. So I tore out the page. This is not my favorite page of that tear out uh, thing. It's got this weird drawing of a, a person on it, but it does say March 31st, 2022, and I decided to use it on this page. And so the type of journaling this is, Peg has now coined it. She's given it a name. She calls it stick it journaling because we have all these things, right? We have little bits of things that people have sent us and we have cut out magazine pieces and we have you know, just all this little, these little things everywhere that we've collected, this ephemera, this, this stuff. And in this case, in this box, I have a whole bunch of different types of butterfly stuff. Some of it's colored, some of it's not, some, some of it's stamped on tissue, some of it's die cut. You know, I just, I have a bunch of stuff. So basically the process is to stick it down. And the way that she does it is she just has a book and she just go through and stick it down and then goes back and, you know, finishes the pages with writing or with, uh, blending or shading or whatever you need to do to finish the pages. Um, that's how she's working in her stick it journal. So she was doing that while I was working in this journal, but I'm basically doing the same process. Although I do finish an entire page before I flip to the next one. Um, I stuck down this cut out piece that I cut out of a a uh, piece of paper that someone had, I think someone stamped it and sent it to me. I have a few envelopes in there of, of things that people have sent me, um, little butterfly things. I think they knew I was doing a butterfly journal and they sent me some things with butterflies because I didn't have that much stuff. And then I stuck down this calendar page and then there was some little uh, die cut flowers and things and uh, stems and whatever that had some spray on them. I stuck those down. So you see, you see the theme, stick it, 
stick it in the book. <laughs> I have other art journals that would really be great for that. And, um, you know, Peg's been cleaning up her studio. She's been, you know, trying to get organized. She does that a lot. I don't do it nearly as much, that kind of spring cleaning idea of, of cleaning and organizing and getting rid of stuff. I hardly ever get rid of anything, but I have in, you know, in times... I will go through and spring clean and put things in drawers and sort and organize and get all my pieces of paper and color boxes, you know, that type of stuff. And this this uh, butterfly journal actually has everything already organized in a box. It's just a, just a throwaway box, but it's got all the butterfly stuff in it. So I really could do a stick it journal by just opening up a book and mindlessly sticking all that stuff down and then finish the pages later. I could do it. But the way that I did this one was to stick the things I wanted on there and then I'm going to finish the page. So I got out some uh, gel sticks, King Art gel sticks, because the, the there was pink on the right hand side, but not on the left. And there was more orange on the left, but not on the right. So I kind of uh, blended the two pages together with a little bit of gel stick. Then I took a black Stabilo All Pencil and went around these little sprig things and made shadows so that because they were so much the same color as what I was sticking them to that they needed to have a shadow around them so that they could show. And then I drew a little flower in that corner for balance. Um, I put a little bit of color on the black and white face thing that was on the page because it was it was black and white completely. So with the exception of the, the kind of cream color march thing on there. Probably one of the only black and white ones I've seen in there, surprisingly. It's kind of interesting. So um, that was fun. Then I went in and did a little bit of highlights with a white Posca pen. Uh, this nose thing that was in the middle of the page was bugging me because all it was was just two nostril dots and then it was just completely one gray color. So I added a little bit of white to give a highlight to where the tip of the nose would be to try to give it a little bit more dimensionality. And then I'm just adding little quick highlights onto the die cut bits that I glued on there. And I will do them on the butterfly and just uh, maybe a little bit of splatter and a little bit more color. And that finishes this page. So it didn't take very long. It was, I don't know how long it took because I've sped up the video, but, um, this, something like this is fun to do when you're just thinking about spring. So the reason that I picked the butterfly that I did was because it kind of looks like uh, a butterfly that I saw three different times yesterday here in Arizona. I think it's a tiger swallowtail, and this one isn't exactly the right patterning or whatever, but I colored it with the yellow colors, which yellow and black butterfly flittering around. I saw three of them yesterday. And so that to me is definitely a sign of spring. I know some people are still having snow and uh, we, we've got cactuses blooming. We've got wildflowers blooming and now the butterflies are coming out and that's definitely, um, you know, it's, it's a sign. It's definitely a sign. So I'm happy about that. I don't enjoy being cold and I don't enjoy gray, dreary sky. So happy about spring. So then I decided to do another page because uh, we, we are live for an hour and a half on the live stream. And I was just flipping through the book to see what had been done. Just I picked this page. Somebody had sent me some things in this envelope and I saved the envelope because it had washi tape on it with butterflies on it. So I wanted to reuse the washi tape. Uh, the thing about washi tape, we try to stick things together with it and we realize that it's not very sticky and it doesn't say stuck down. So a benefit to that is if someone sends you something with washi tape on it, like an envelope, you can pull the washi tape off and reuse it. So that's what I did. I'm pulling the tape off and then I'm sticking it into my journal with a YooHoo glue stick and pressing it down, making sure that it's good and stuck and um, just... This page is a little bit more of the muted tone type look, which this is the last day of hashtag AJOS muted tones. I know a lot of people enjoyed that um, theme for the month, you know, color mixing and figuring out how to change your palette beyond what is just given to you in a bottle. So um, 
this is kind of vintage colored tape. So it has the butterflies. It's got some other like little sprigs of flowers and things on it. And by putting that on there onto the page, which already wasn't as bright as the other pages I was doing, um, kind of even muted it down a little bit and made it more uh, calm and more tonal. So then I needed to find some things to put on it. And I was looking through all my stuff um, and I found a stamped image and I'm like, this is exactly it. It had a prickly pear cactus on it, a butterfly perched on the prickly pear cactus, a sunshine or moonshine shape at the top. And then there's this little tiny adobe, which really is, you know, gives you the idea of Arizona, which obviously it must be a fairy house because everything is so out of proportion. But, um, a stamped image that I believe Rennie had sent me. Uh, she also lives in Arizona and she collects stamps and things. So she, she stamped it on tissue and sent it to me. And it was absolutely exactly my experience from yesterday. I saw butterflies. I saw them landing on the prickly pear cactus. I saw blooms on the prickly pear cactus. I, it was in Arizona and I'm like, that's perfect. I'm going to make a cactus page with this image and then I'm going to uh, stencil some other cactuses on here and uh, make a page about spring in Arizona. How perfect is that? So I used a stencil that had a prickly pear on it and then I used another stencil that I designed, an ATC stencil, to just add some more patterning. Um, this is actually a totem cactus, a little bit different type of cactus, but um, Stenciling that with heavy white gesso because you know the background's colored. So, I mean, stenciling it, eh, maybe if I'd stencil it in green, it would show up, but I just figured this would be the best choice. So, heavy white gesso, stencil brush. Then, once it was dry, I'm using some ink tense pencils. These are these are water reactive pencils. You, you color them on and then you can smush them around with water. And then once they're dry, they are permanent. They don't move anymore after they're dry once you've activated them with water. So I'm coloring over that gesso that I've stenciled with different colors. And then that way I can get multicolor stenciling out of it by just stenciling with the white gesso. So the white gesso covers the background and I don't get any interference with that color from the background and then I can color over the top with pencils. So it's a fun little technique. I'm applying the color with the pencils and then blending it with a water brush. Water tank brush has water in the handle so I don't have to go and dip my brush into water to do it. I like these brushes because they make it easy for my life. <laughs> so <clears throat> I've added some different greens. I've added some pinks and reds to the, the flower parts of the cactuses. There's one cactus that I saw blooming yesterday when I was going to the store that is so bright. The colors of it are just an intense like pink, purple, fuchsia. So, so, so intense, almost fluorescent really. I wish you guys could see it because it's an amazing amazing floral of this cactus and I think it's called I think it's one of the varieties of a beaver tail cactus but the flowers are just eye popping it's one of the brightest ones so then where my stamped on tissue collaged on with fluid matte medium area is I need now to add some color to that um, I decided to go ahead with a little bit of white gesso and a brush and just fill it in a little bit so that I would get more intense color when I colored over the top of it because since it was tissue paper and I put it on with fluid matte medium, it it's translucent, took on the colors of what's underneath. So I wanted it to, to be a little bit brighter than that. So that's why I added some white gesso with a, a little brush on there. And then I added some color with the pencils and then blended that out. I'm going to go back in um, with some black pen and some white pen like you do. 
to um, add some of the lines back in and make it I don't know. It's like you put something on there, then you then you cover it with paint, and then you have to go back in and put some of the lines back in. So it's kind of a silly process, but it works. <laughs> Maybe a little time consuming, but it works. I'm sure all of you have been have done it before. You should like, oh, I, I want to I want to color this stamped image, so you color it, and then the lines of it are now messed up because you've colored over the top of it, and you have to draw the lines back in. It's a very very common thing. So now I'm drawing the lines back in with a Posca pen, a fine tip Posca pen. So I hope you guys are enjoying this video. I hope that you do come and join us and join us on Thursday mornings over at Art Joy of Sharing live stream channel. Or if you're in the UK or Australia, it's probably at nighttime for you. But um, we always enjoy seeing everyone visiting us in the live. And if you do enjoy the speed version, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment or question below, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, turn on your notification bells uh, so that you know when there's a new video out. And of course, you can join my channel. It's $1.99 a month, and you get exclusive content on the 15th of the month that is real-time edu education-type content where I do a project and teach you in real time and then I also include on the 15th a speed version of the same video for those of you who prefer to watch it quickly and don't need to listen to me talk about how I'm doing things and what I'm using and and you know the techniques so the next thing I did after I finished uh, kind of doing the illustration lines is I've had these little um, a little snail a ladybug and a butterfly moth and I stamped a few of those on there just flittering around the funny thing about this page is that everything is out of proportion we have this little tiny adobe house then we have this giant cactus then we have this giant ladybug on a smaller cactus I mean the ladybug would be a dot on that cactus but instead we've got the you know it's just funny it's kind of a wonderland thing going on <laughs> and a snail I mean I'm sure we do have snails I don't see a lot of snails I'm sure they're out there we have worms so we probably have snails too uh, but I put him on there a little snail crawling along the ground and a ladybug and uh, just you know for fun because it's fun and then uh, to finish up I got out my basket of Posca pins the Posca pins because they are acrylic ink in a pin are opaque almost all the colors are opaque so you can color over something and it will be that color as opposed to like the pencils when you color with the pencils and then activate them with water you're still getting something from underneath showing through that process is more transparent so I wanted to add some color that was not transparent then I got out some stamps, some letter stamps, and I'm stamping the words, spring has sprung. That's something that my mom always used to say to me. And I'm, I mean, it's a common saying here in the United States, spring has sprung because a spring, it's kind of a play on words. A spring is something that's, that's bouncy and, um, you know, springs, like it's a curled thing that can pop something up or else it is a, uh, a bunny that springs along you know the word has multiple uses that English word has multiple uses and so spring has sprung if something is has a spring the past tense of that word is sprung it has sprung so if it springs it has sprung anyway way too much ex explanation there but you I'm sure that most of you have heard that saying before spring is sprung spring is sprung and it's funny so I stamped that on there in kind of a dark green ink and then I went around the edges of it with white. Uh, I wish that the camera had been zoomed in more on this video, but um, this was taken on my phone as I'm doing a live stream with my other camera, so I can't really zoom it um, easily. So it's always kind of a little bit far away and this journal is small, so it's a little bit hard to see, but there are close up vi uh, pictures coming at the end and you will be able to see it up close 
going back in again with white and with black just to finish up making sure that that everything that I want in the color I want in the lines that I want are all there so that this little spring in the desert page in my butterfly journal will be complete so that's it for me thanks for watching I'll see you again soon bye bye